Right folks, um, yeah so just a little thing I wanted to make a video about. Now some of you probably know that I am an English teacher, I'm an ESOL teacher actually, I teach English to uh, speakers of other languages. Um, I've been doing that for about three years or so now. Before that I was doing my undergraduate degree which was in English and uh, linguistics. And it's weird because I don't speak exactly chavishly. You know, I do come from a working class area. Um, when I was younger, I got quite paranoid about my accent and I, there was a lot of things. For example, th, which I changed because I used to say, for example, things and other, which is normal from where I'm, where, where I'm from. So I went, I got really paranoid when I was about 11. I tried to change my accent quite a lot and I did. But anyway, uh, you know, so I've not got a kind of chavvy accent, but I do have estuarine elements. I mean, I do have kind of working class London elements to my speech. Um, but a lot of these elements are not really working class elements even. They're just kind of normal everyday elements that just normal people have. Like um, what we call preposition stra uh, stranding. So this is where instead of saying with whom I was speaking, we say who I was speaking with. All right. And, uh, yeah, it's weird. So these kind of things, you know, double negative to mean a negative. I don't know nothing. Uh, preposition stranding, like I said. Um, what other examples? Uh, oh, whatever, you know the type of thing. These are all features of English speech. You know, splitting the infinitive to boldly go as opposed to go boldly, to go boldly. Um, these are all parts of normal English speech, but a lot of people say they're not acceptable, they're not grammatical. It's weird, because I always used to speak like that, but all through my GCSEs and A-levels, that was when I was in school, nobody said anything to me. But as soon as I started doing an English degree, everybody all, all of a sudden thought they were some language critic. As soon as I started doing an English and linguistics degree, people started going, oh, what's wrong? What's happened now? No, it's just, oh, oh, it's nothing, Brian, it's nothing. Well, what well, is something, can it? I mean, what, you know, what's the problem? No, it's it's just, uh, you know, oh, it's just something. It's, it's a little silly. Just tell me, tell me, spit out now because you're, you know, getting on my nerves, mate. Well, it's just, um, you know, you just said, ain't. I think you'll find it's, isn't. <laughs> what? No, it ain't. It's what I say it is. Okay, ain't has got a long lineage, but you know what? No one used to criticise that sort of stuff about my language, about my English, before I started doing a degree in English. And since that point onwards, right through to the present day as an English teacher, people who don't know anything, I mean, people who are really stupid a lot of time, people, some people who are really dumb, really, really thick, as well as people who you know are quite intelligent, but they don't know anything about anything, they're all stuck up. Uh, they majored in bloody knobology or something at uni. They'll go, oh, Brian, you can't possibly use two negatives to mean a negative. <laughs> it's insane. And then when you point out that the vast majority of English speakers across the world actually do speak like that, or at least in some circumstances speak like that, and it's a perfectly legitimate way of speaking. It's not, you know, incorrect at all. It's one way of speaking, and it's perfectly fine. They'll say, oh, well, it's bastardised English. Oh, it's bastardised, you know, you know what the kids are like. And then you say to them, no, 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 mate. Double negative to mean a negative actually goes back to old English, all right? Because the problem is a lot of these ideas can't split an infinitive, can't use a double negative to mean a negative, you know, you can't preposition, strand, whatever. These are all notions that have cropped up only in the last few hundred years. You know, you can't use ain't. Ain't used to be <laughs> a literary word. It used to be correct, you know, like properly correct, like really good way of speaking. Um, it's only in the last few hundred years that people have started getting all confused. And partly it's because uh, a lot of people fell in love with Latin. And they were like, oh, you can't split infinitives in Latin. There therefore, you can't do it in English. Hmm. Well, one, Latin ain't English. And two, no, you can't, because Latin works differently. Because in Latin, the infinitive is a part of the word itself. Whereas in English, you can mark it with a separate word, two. So, of course, you can't split it, because there's nothing to split in Latin. But English is a different language, you know? But no, 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 people know better. You know what really irritates me? 
Um, just this linguistic snobbery. Uh, oh, cacti, baby. There's nothing wrong with cacti, but you know, don't sneer when people say cactuses. Really don't sneer. I've even heard people pushing it to peni. I mean, mostly jocularly, but I have heard a few people say, no, but it is peni, isn't it? Of course it's not peni. Get your head out of that book and look at the real world. Go outside into the streets. Who the hell says peni? I mean, people don't even say penis anyway. That's a knob or cock or, you know, <laughs> dick or whatever. But, willy. But, uh, I mean, what are you talking about? You know, as I say, the thing that bugs me most is that since I became, you know, since I started on this path of being an English type of person, doing English as a job, so to speak, in my undergraduate degree, all through to actually being an English teacher, people think they can just criticise you randomly. Probably because I'm easy to wind up. <laughs> but a lot of the time, you know, people just think they know what they're talking about. They're talking crap. I, I had one person tell me that, that soldier was pronounced sold ear. What are you talking about? What are you talking... That is hypercorrection, by the way. Pe that is another pet peeve of mine. Right? In English, by the way, the object case or the objective case, whatever the hell you want to call it, is the default case. Yeah? Not the subject, subjective case. Okay? So, when I say me and him went to the shop, that is perfectly legitimate English and it has been for a very long time. Okay? But you, you get people going, oh, well, actually, I think you'll find it's John and I. No, it's not. It's John and I, or me and John. They're both correct, and do not say they're not. I could produce a paper uh, showing you how you're wrong, but I can't be bothered, frankly. But I don't need people sneering, because I know better. One, that's how I speak, and that's how millions of English peop uh, speakers speak. Therefore, de facto, it is correct. Two, things like that have a really, really good lineage. It's not just that people speak like that, therefore it's correct. Really, um... A long history for a lot for all of these features I'm talking about, and yet some people pretentiously come along and say, "Oh, you can't speak like that, darling. That's the language of chavs." Mm. Ah, madness, you know. Um, yeah, but since I gained, started doing English as a job, so to speak, everyone thinks they can criticise you. Everyone, even like mucker on the street sweeping up turd. Actually, he wouldn't do that because you know what? He's a normal human. It's people, it's aspiring, aspiring working classes and petty bourgeois right up to upper middle. And then when you get to the proper top echelons of upper, upper middle, then they stop because they don't need to pretend how sophisticated they are. From upper, upper, upper middle to like upper classes, people don't even give a toss how you speak. They really don't care. That's my experience anyway, or maybe they hide it more. But it's from aspiring working classes all the way up to the majority of the middle classes. People are so obsessed with their the way they sound, the way they talk, they will jump on the way you talk. It's like, I do this for a job, son, okay? Shut up. If I want to say, me and him went to the shop, I will say that. Also, what the hell is this phobia of using the word me? People are so obsessed, they started to use the reflexive to mean me. So they'll say, I myself like cricket. That's good, because it's emphatic. I cut myself. That's good, because it's reflexive. Myself, yourself, etc. are reflexive and emphatic. Myself and John went to the shop. What do you mean, myself and John? What are you talking about? And, you know, de facto, if people use it, it's correct. But the problem, the irritation for me is not that people say myself and, and John or whatever. It's that people say myself and John because they're so paranoid about using me. <laughs> because me has become this pariah word. That they, they will do anything to get away from using it. And that's the irritation. Anyway, this is a rant. Uh, you know, hence why it's another episode, I don't know if I call it that, of uh, Reasons to be Cheerful. Um, I hope it's made you cheerful. I've got a lot off my chest now. I feel a lot better, thank you very much. So, until next time, have a lovely day. Don't criticise my English, or I will cry. And, uh, yeah, you know, peace, respect, love, and all of that. Uh, see you later. Bye.